Okay, so silver and gold on the monthly close look absolutely gorgeous. It could not look better. Not only did we get a touch and go kiss on the 200 monthly chart, okay, monthly chart. It looks like it's going to close back into <laughs> this descending channel that it fell out of. Uh, this is uh, quite amazing to see. It's beautiful to see. And uh, it has confluence with gold. Look at what gold gave us. So first of all, remember, this is a monthly chart, okay? So we have this massive cup and handle pattern that we've been building for over a decade, okay? Beautiful, beautiful backdrop of everything we're seeing, okay? Lay this on top of the, of the world and what they're doing with our money, and this gold's telling you what it's about to do. Don't, don't overthink this, okay? Look what it did here. We got this huge sell-off that came. It kissed, gave us a touch-and-go on the 50, on the monthly time frame, okay? Do you understand how significant that is? Let's zoom in a little bit. Look at that double confluence. It hit the 200 on the weekly. Zoom in a little bit more, and you can see that what it was doing was putting in a rounded bottom. <laughs> it's like no matter what time frame you look at, it just looks beautiful from all angles, right? Uh, and look at this giant hammer. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. It's freaking awesome. Do you understand what the gold's telling you right here? It's about to blast off into oblivion. It's never got oh, Guys, this could not look better. Could not look better. Let's look at the equities. Bitcoin came down and tested this key level, all right? And then it managed to close above it on the month. The following month, we have traded essentially sideways between that same support level, all right? Right about 20,000 and the 50, okay? So uh, it's really just kind of traded sideways for a bit. It's consolidated for the month is an easy way to say it. And even when you look at it on the weekly, Clearly, that's what it's done, all right? It's just kind of range, range bound in here, though it does seem to be putting in its own rounded bottom to a degree, right? It is something to watch in Bitcoin. Bitcoin could be a leading indicator. Uh, Ethereum, kind of the same thing. Um, you know, it looks pretty good attempting to round on the bottom. Then, of course, on the monthly, it closed above the 50. So this looks pretty good as well. Um, I'm going to flip down to AMD here. AMD was a telltale. It really helped give confluence to the coming bear market rally that we you know anticipated in advance knew that we were going to get and have been watching um, because when you came down to this level right here 72 dollars on amd as a clear buy uh, we talked about it on this channel i did not buy it i could not buy it at the time i wish i could have because i totally would have it was a clear buy signal on the charts it was a clear technical bounce um, but i want you to see here this range is very powerful support and resistance for amd this is the monthly again now Switch to the weekly. You again, had a double confluence of support. So not only did this horizontal line act as support, but on the weekly time frame, the 200 gave it support. And on the monthly time frame, the 50 gave it support. So you had a massive, massive, massive support here. It was just begging you to buy. That was a strong buy. And we have gotten the rally. Um, but we're coming up uh, to the top of this descending channel right here. So that's going to be the first resistance. But even if you break it, the next stop is right here at about 100 bucks. Not only do you have the horizontal there at 100 bucks, which is also a psychological number, but you have the 50 on the weekly. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a tough place to break, all right? It's just going to be a tough pl pl place to break. So what this is telling us is that despite the nice bounce here, we could start seeing AMD to struggle a little bit uh, if it can't break clearly through $100, right? So I want you to keep this in mind as we move forward. So this is the monthly candle for Cameco, okay? And I want you to see that historically, we've been complaining about volume lately, right? Not getting a whole lot of volume. But historically, the volume we're getting now is still rather significant, okay? Um, though it is still average at best since the start of the bull run, okay? So it still leaves a bit to be desired. So it's more important to see it on the weekly time frame. However, while we are here, I can tell you if you look at the RSI, You'll see the bottom of our price continues to rise over time. You see that? Okay. So we have an ascension over time on the lows of our prices. Okay. Meanwhile, if you look at the RSI, we're getting declines over time. Do you see that? You see how this line goes up on the bottom and this line goes down on the bottom. So this is a hidden bullish divergence on the monthly chart. All right, the monthly chart. So this is a big deal. What this is trying to tell you is that this upwards trend is going to continue, though it might be weak, okay? Because the longer it goes on, the weaker it's going to get. But 
technically it has been building strength on the RSI to take another leg up. So the real trick here, uh, once we get the leg up, is to watch the top side of the RSI. So if you look at the price on the top, well, the price on the top continues to go up over time too, right? Well, the price over time does not continue to go up on the top. You see how it's more like that? So when we come up here, this is something you're going to be watching. You're going to be watching the RSI on the top, okay? Because if you can't break this price uh, without breaking this too, then odds are you're going to roll over again, all right? And that's a big macro-looking picture of things, okay? Um, zooming in a little bit, I just want you to understand that this is our first target, okay? 2820 is your first target on Cameco. By the way, nice weekly close on Cameco. This looks good. Nice ramp up in volume, breaking out above. That looks like a bull market to me. I really like it when I'm, I haven't even seen that today, so that's, that's pretty nice. Again, this is a double bottom pattern. You had a V bottom, rounded bottom. Rounded bottoms are very powerful. They're a basing pattern. They are a buildup pattern. They're an accumulation pattern. I told you, uh, actually, um, when the sell-off happened and we came down here the first time, this is actually what I expected on this side. And then when we didn't get it, I had to adapt, and then we did what we did from there. But I have actually always anticipated this. I just thought it would be here. So this, and the reason why, by the way, and let's go into the daily so we can catch up. For those of you who are new, um, we saw the Wyckoff pattern building here, okay? And we knew that that was going to give us the sell-off. Well, what comes after Wyckoff? Well, accumulation, which is why I expected this, because this is accumulation, okay? That's why I expected it to happen here. So this gives you a lot of potential to make a big break, all right? So if you are in right now and if you accumulated on this trend line, you're in excellent shape. Because even if the market opens next Monday and it sells off 10%, you're still up. <laughs> it's like you're still up a lot. It's like the only people who have to worry right now are the people who are not in. All right? um, so you're in good shape. We are well above our buys. And we can breathe easy and just kind of let the market do its thing now. Okay, So it's just back to basics here. Uh, we're kind of getting what we want to see on the larger time frame, which is to say the weekly. Right? Um, I, I think this this is pretty positive. Once we come up to 2830, we'll see how it acts. All right, let's jump on the daily. If it starts to roll over here and we get denied, you know, we're going to start selling, okay, because it's probably coming at least all the way back to this line, if not back down to this one, okay? Um, failed double bottom patterns here uh, typically give you a lot of downside, all right? So don't take it lightly. However, it's as equally powerful as if we break up. If we break up and hold without coming back and falling through this thing, look, it's coming back. It's going all the way to the top of this trend line. I'm just telling you right now, it's what it's going to do. We break the top of this W pattern. It's going all the way to the top of the channel. This is what it's going to do. Okay. And this is across the board. Everything has the same pattern. Everything's got the same W pattern. This is part of what makes it so easy to chart uranium is that there's so much confluence all the time. Again, so... As you come to the right side of your W pattern, you're getting a ramp up in volume. This is textbook. This is key. This is beautiful. This is exactly what you want to see. So the volume descended down into the trough, and it's ascending on the way out. That's a breakout. This is good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm very confident uh, that this is going to hold now, actually. Um, but again, we'll have to see what happens with the broad market in the near term. Uh, there could be some confluence there, but again... I think we should at least make it to this level. We should at least make it to this level, okay? Next gen, it's really telling us the same thing. Um, you know, it's the same story across the board and everything you look at, right? And the majors are all doing what they need to do, all right? So you broke a major resistance here on ascending volume. That's good on the week. Um, but you hit a critical uh, resistance there. That's okay, one at a time. And so let's just see, you know, let's see how it plays out. I told you in the last video, once you broke up here, you did not want to come back down. Clearly, we came and tested at a level and closed back up very strong and ascended it again the next day on higher volume. So this is all going where it needs to go. This all looks really good. I mean, uh, you go on and on and on and on and on. We broke out of this descending wedge on increasing volume on the break. And, you know, we came down and tested the 50 and we took back off again. And, you know, this is all very good. This is all good stuff to like here. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I did not like Denison. As much as the rest, I told you guys that I sold out here when I saw it stall. And here we are two days later, and you can see that it is underperforming its peers. 
So uh, clearly the market knew about the news, at least the who's who, they knew about it. That's why it wasn't trading the same, uh, because typically what happens when you get a merger deal like this, DNN is uh, trying to acquire another company. So the company, in this case DNN, making the offer typically loses value in their share price. Uh, and the company being bought out typically gains in their share price, okay? So this is what this is actually telling you, if you're smart enough to read between the lines, is that the who's who that's buying all this stuff knew about this deal. They knew about this being in the works, and uh, they didn't put their money in like they put it into everything else, okay? You understand that? That's just how you, it's just the kind of thing that you have to, um, you got to be wise enough to sniff that kind of stuff out. But uh, let's look at the ETFs. They have been performing pretty well. Again, you got to break, you got to close above the 200 on the daily. Very nice. You know, it's all moving in the right direction. You know, let's check out, we're supposed to be looking at the big picture here. Again, we'll zoom out. Da, 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 da. You know, very nice bounce on the 50. Um, you know, it was pretty boring for the month, so the monthly candle is a little ambiguous here because, you know, the volume really came at the end. So we'll really have to see a follow-up next month, all right? So next month could be pretty big for uranium here, um, but it's set up in a really good way, okay? It's set up in a really good way. It's just going to need a catalyst, something more than it already has, to keep it separated from this broad market, Um We'll see what's coming. Uh, the way things are going, I actually would not be surprised whatsoever to see uranium get that catalyst, but you know, it's gotta come. Either way, it's gotta come. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh yeah, I actually wanna talk about SMR and Silex. Uh, I haven't been talking about them. I need to, so we're going to. Monthly chart, obviously massive break here. Uh, we really need to kind of zoom in more, but obviously it's at all time highs. Coming to the weekly, and we had this pattern going here. It's very clean, very clear pattern. And we had a clean break of that on big increased volume. Um, and then we followed up the next week and set new all-time highs, closed near the highs on, again, massive volume. Zoom in a little bit more on the daily. And, I mean, look, uh, today was one of the bigger days closing up, setting new all-time highs. So this is a textbook uh, breakout here. I was actually in the uranium space uh, with uh, Alex and Chapman talking about this breakout when it happened. I posted about it on Twitter too. Um, so this was a pretty clear breakout because it had the volume and everything when it happened. It looked really good and uh, it has followed through. And uh, I had actually even mentioned on that show that um, it could have been a catalyst because the who's who were getting ahead of SMR um, because it's got a low float. And if you want to own it, you simply have to go buy it. And I was wondering if SMR was similar to the very small gold and silver stocks in so much as it was getting, you know, massive bids before the broad market was, before the rest of the sector was, uh, because that's where the big money is in the long run, right? And I think that, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, that seems to be um, playing out just the same. Uh, so very interesting to watch. It definitely looks good. Uh, Silex, uh, we're going to have to zoom out on this guy. Let's see. Yeah, let's zoom out on the monthly. We're supposed to be doing our monthly macro candles here. All right. So look at this huge volume here. Uh, a massive ramp up in volume to a clear resistance level. That's good. That's very bullish. It closed near the top of the candle on the month, but it's coming into new resistance. We need to zoom in a little bit here. And uh, yeah. This, this looks like a pretty significant level. Just eyeballing it, you can see it, right? So let's put a line on it right about here. Let's see. Uh, but up, but up. I mean, it looks good. Um, something this bullish. Uh, man, it's had a nice run up. You feel like it's got to sell off, right? I'm not sure I'm not going to chase this thing. Um, you know, if I miss it, I miss it. I, I, I'm not a chaser. Um, you know, it really sucks because I made my first video on it way back here, way back here. It was like a dollar and I didn't buy it. And here we are way up here now. But that's how it is sometimes. You can't catch them all. Uh, I would say the chart's very overextended and it's an extremely bullish company. Uh, but it's pretty overbought. I, 
I would like to see it sell off a bit before I dip in. I think the more it continues to do this, the more likely it is to do just that, right? It's going to need to sell off. It's getting a little vertical there. So uh, that's never a good thing unless you owned it back here. <laughs> now it's a great thing because you can sell it uh, hopefully at the top uh, before it comes back down. SIL, look at the volume for this month. Okay, very nice. Very nice. A strong rebound type candle here. Uh, on a strong support level, if we zoom in a little bit, okay, we can see that it's also rounding out. This is a nice rounding basing pattern before breaking out on ascending volume. Very nice to see. Loving what I'm seeing. Again, to get these kind of oversold technicals, you have to go way back to, you know, significant points of being significantly oversold. These are all buy zones, right? This is why we were buying here. This is why we we're screaming buy here. And uh, I think you're going to be very happy if you did in the long term. Going to uh, uh, the juniors, of course, it paints a very similar picture. Nice rounding bottom <laughs> you know, with at least a first term goal up here at the minimum. Uh, even if this ends up being a short term rally, we're getting a rally. And uh, the charts look very, very good. Very, very clean. I mean, that's a strong, strong bullish reversal candle. I mean, come on. Give me a break. Okay, let's keep going. GDX, um, same kind of significant level here where we got a test, a break, but a close above for the month. Uh, the volume's not really doing anything for us, but if we switch to GDXJ, it's painting a slightly different picture. This is a nice rebound kind of candle um, on arguably a stronger level. Let's zoom into the weekly. And you can see that even on the weekly, we're getting a rounded bottom. That's very bullish, especially with the close we got to follow up and finish. Uh, on the daily, I mean, yeah, this is a nice basing pattern that we're got, setting us up for a nice launch. And on the daily, you have nice follow through. I mean, this looks really, really, really good. Guys, just to give you some perspective here, this is Agnico Eagle. This is a 50 year chart, 30 years of which we have spent in a clear uptrend. This is a clear bull market lasting 30 years. And it gives us a lot of history, including volume and RSI indicator technicals that we can follow. And what you need to look at is that we have now fallen out of this bull channel twice. Uh, the first time was March 2020, the COVID lows, which were a bit of an anomaly. And then now. So how do we compare historically, uh, you know, in, in terms of volume and oversold indicators uh, to where we are now? And the answer is pretty easy. If you just look at the volume, I already counted these. There's about 10 months. Okay. Remember, these are monthly candles. 10 months out of 50 years with more volume than this month right here. Okay. This includes obviously the COVID lows, which we have already blown away. If you zoom in to see where that volume came from, it's coming here largely on the bounce, the sell and then the subsequent bounce. This bounce, by the way, is about the fifth or sixth most weekly volume ever in the history of these 50 years all right, that we've been trading. And so this is telling you that we are likely putting in a significant pivot here. All right. This is a significant level. And again, the technicals are screaming the same thing. Uh, these move around and adjust, uh, you know, based on where I put them originally. I had it on a monthly chart, so it doesn't look good here. But, uh, you know, you have to come back to significant pivot points on the weekly, um, which we are here, to get a strong rebound. There's extraordinary confluence. Even on the breadth of the level of being oversold, you have to come all the way back to here. So you have a double confluence here of being oversold, not only in terms of the RSI, but also in breadth. Okay, so when we zoom back on the monthly, look guys, do you see the confluence of how oversold we are? This level here is essentially equivalent to this level here. All right, so though we have fallen out of this channel, this makes it extremely oversold historically. And uh, the market is trying to tell you in confluence with what you're seeing in the spot price here, the futures price of both gold and silver, um, that we're trying to put in a strong pivot low, a pivot bottom here. I couldn't be more bullish on these metals. I think they're ready to go. Uh, you need to get all aboard, you know, choo 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 boogie. This thing is taking off. I just want to point to this chart one more time of First Majestic, okay, on this advancing volume that we're getting. You look back at every one of these arrows when we come back to the bottom of this trend. Was there ever a case when you would have regretted buying any of these? I don't think so. Just something to chew on. Now, I don't have as much time as I'd like for this video, uh, but to cover all the bases, I really have to touch on the bond market real quick. 
clearly we're getting a bid uh, coming out of this head and shoulders pattern. This is pretty significant because if we only touch this 200, that's 2.4%, okay? That's only, what, 15 basis points away from the 2.25 where the Fed overnight fund rate is, right? So the Fed just hiked rates again, right, 75 basis points. It puts the overnight rate at 2.25. If the 10 years sitting at 2.4, I mean, look, this is a big problem between overnight rates and 10-year rates being essentially the same, okay? So what the bond market's telling you is they're not buying it, all right? So as this catches more of a bid, as these yields fall and fall and fall and fall, it's going to be harder and harder and harder for the Fed to continue raising rates. This is why I am quite confident that come September, they either don't raise at all or it'll be a very minimal hike. We're talking 50 to 25 basis points. I think it's behind us. I think the bond market knows it. And this is why you're getting the bid. Now, this can be ambiguous in terms of signaling. Uh, some people might say this is a sign of risk on as this is a sign that the, you know, we're about to start printing more money and all that. I mean, you see the um, the act they're trying to pass now, the $700 billion bill <laughs> to curb inflation. <laughs> it's the, uh, the inflation something something act. It's just nonsense, right? We'll get into that at another time. But uh, clearly more money's printing is on the way and they can't print money as long as rates are too high. So we all know where this is going. I've been pounding the table on it forever. Uh, the bond market is telling you the same thing. You're getting all the signals. We know what's happening here. Uh, just to step out broadly, quickly uh, on the broad markets. You look at the monthly candle. We had a nice bounce there on the 50. Uh, remember, this is the monthly. And, you know, I've been anticipating that 4,200 would be where we rebounded to since the onset of the bear market rally. And I'm using this in confluence and conjunction when I track uh, uranium, gold, and silver equities. And you can see that as we approach kind of the top here, what should be the top of this rally, you know, we're, we're also coming into what's likely the top uh, in some of these equities, right? So if you look at AMD coming up to 100 bucks, that's going to be hard to get above, just like it's going to get you know, really tough for the broad market to get over 3,200 on the S&P. So you're kind of seeing confluence here while we might start rolling over. Sure. Could you get a break like this above here? Yeah, you could. Um, but again, 4,200 is the target. And then we'll start seeing how the market reacts there. We won't have to wait long. You could get here in another trading day. So, um, you know, what happens next? Uh, we're going to know it fairly soon. It's worth keeping an eye on. Meanwhile, we'll keep an eye on the uranium equities to determine whether or not this will be a long-term and uh, sustained rally or if this will be a short-term pivot swing trade. And the key, again, is right here at the top of this double bottom pattern. And uh, the reaction there will tell us uh, what we need to know going forward. Jobs this and jobs that. I don't give a damn about no jobs. People don't need no jobs. I'm going to tell you what people need. Huh? People need money. Lots and lots of money. That's why the only jobs I'm going to create are going to be down at the mint. That's right. We're going to print so much damn money. I'm going to give every single American one million dollars. Ain't going to be no more one percenters. Everybody's going to be million percenters. And then everybody's going to be rich. And nobody going to have any more problems. And you ain't got to worry about no damn health care or nothing. And then we going to have a big ass party with all the 